Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So about a month ago, I did an experimental video about how to use an Android phone as a dedicated retro handheld device. And in the end, I had some mixed feelings about the whole experience, and a lot of that had to do with the telescopic controller that I had chosen to use. Now in the comments of that video, I got suggestions for other gamepads to use. And so today we're going to check out a couple of those. First up is the most recent release by GameSir called the X2 Bluetooth. Now as the name implies, this connects via Bluetooth to your phone. You could use it on either an iPhone or an Android phone. And I recently picked this one up as part of an Indiegogo campaign. And it works just like you would expect. You connect via Bluetooth to your phone, and it has its own internal 500 milliamp hour battery. And this controller is actually an update from one that was released earlier this year. And this is the previous one here. It's called the GameSir X2. Now this one does not have a Bluetooth connection. Instead, you have to connect via a USB-C port. So in that regard, you're limited to USB-C devices, and because of that, Android phones. And because this one connects directly into your phone, it doesn't have its own internal battery, it connects via your phone's battery. And while that might seem like a negative, it's actually a positive, we'll get into that later. So yeah, in a nutshell, we're going to look at these two controllers, get a good idea which one's best for you in your gaming situation, and talk a little bit about the merits of having one of these controllers in the first place. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. Now this gamepad actually shipped from California, but it sure felt like it came from China. Even though it shipped quickly, it still had that like Chinese factory smell to it. Honestly, after unboxing it, I had to let it air out for a couple days before it stopped stinking. It just had that weird chemical factory smell to it. Now inside the box is actually a little game case here. This is pretty handy, and it comes with both models. Inside here you find a little accessories box, which will have extra analog stick covers, a user manual, and then a sticker as well. The Bluetooth model also comes with a very short charging cable. So first impressions of this device in particular is that it felt surprisingly light despite having a battery inside of it. And just one quick second here. All right, that's better. And as you can imagine, my cat really appreciates this little chicken logo on the front. In terms of the feel of the device, the analog sticks themselves, they feel okay. They're a little bit cheap feeling, like they're very light on the fingers. For me, the D-pad is almost exactly like what it is on the 3DS. It's a little bit like the Retroid Pocket 2, but easier to click down on. This is definitely a clicky D-pad, there's no mushiness to it. But it's not an unpleasant feeling, and all of the buttons have the same clickiness as well. On the bottom here, you can see it has a charging port, as well as a power and pairing button. On the bottom left, there's a screenshot button, and on the bottom right, there's a fast forward button. These top function buttons act as your select and start buttons. The face buttons themselves feel almost identical to the Nintendo Switch. They're very clicky, but not unpleasant. Much like the other buttons, these shoulder buttons and trigger buttons are super clicky. I don't think it's a bad thing per se, but this is definitely not an analog experience. One of my favorite features about both of these is that they have these contoured grips on the back. They're also textured very nicely and easy on the hands. Overall, it's a very solidly built device. Now comparing it to the non-Bluetooth X2 model, they're basically identical. The buttons, the analog sticks, the shoulder buttons, they all feel exactly the same. Dimensions are also the same, but obviously the non-Bluetooth one doesn't have a connection button. So yeah, when it comes to controls, as far as I could tell, these two units are identical. Okay, let's weigh these real quick. 174 grams for the Bluetooth controller. For the non-Bluetooth controller, 167 grams. So I wasn't really that far off, the battery is very light. Now when you have a phone attached to it, here's my LG V90, it's 372 grams. Now that's pretty heavy for a handheld. Let's compare it to some of my other heavy handhelds. So the RJ351M is 271 grams. The PS Vita 1000 is 285 grams. And then the Odrego Super is 286 grams. So this combination of the GameSir controller and a phone is gonna be at least 100 grams more than any of your typical handheld devices. So testing out the Bluetooth connection here, you just basically hold onto this pairing button for a bit, and then you'll see the little lights are flashing on the right side of the controller and then you just connect to your phone. And it popped right up first time and I had no issues connecting after that. It was definitely a painless experience. Now sliding your phone into the controller is actually really easy as well. And this is where the device feels really solid. Now focusing on the Bluetooth controller here in particular, I definitely felt some lag when I was playing any game. So even something like Virtual Tennis here on the Dreamcast definitely felt like I was a little bit behind the curve. Same thing with the PSP here, it's just a tiny little bit of lag, but it just feels like you're playing a little bit underwater. And I had the same experience playing any Android game. And honestly, it wasn't the end of the world, I adapted to it pretty quickly. 
But when it came to playing any sort of platformers and any retro gaming, it was just terrible. When I tried to play Mario 3 in RetroArch, I basically felt like it was unplayable. Even when I messed with the latency options in RetroArch, it didn't fix any of it. So honestly, at this point, I was like, okay, I'm done with this controller. There's no way that I'd be able to use it with a phone and have any fun with it. And you know, one other thing that this Bluetooth controller has is an app called G-Touch, which basically functions as a button mapper, which means that you can map touch controls to the buttons themselves. And I tested it a little bit, but honestly, I kind of just gave up because the latency was just so bad on this controller. So now let's try the other controller, the one that isn't Bluetooth connected. Now, first things first, it's a little bit weird that the USB port is on the left side like this, considering that the natural way to rotate your phone is the opposite way. And so if there are any games that do not allow you to rotate to the left side, you're not gonna be able to play them because they're gonna be upside down. But one thing I really appreciate is that this USB-C connector has a little bit of wobble to it. So you're never gonna damage your phone when you're putting it in. It's really as simple as sliding your phone into the controller. Now, for some reason on my phone in particular, it always would try to do this backup thing here. So I would have to cancel it every time. That may not happen in your phone, but it happened on mine. And thankfully, because of this direct connection, there are no latency issues with this controller. And directly comparing the latency between these two controllers, it's night and day. So if you're sensitive to latency at all, I would highly recommend this one over the other. So let's get another look at those face buttons again. To me, they're almost dead ringers of Nintendo Switch or Nintendo 3DS buttons. So if you don't mind those buttons, you're gonna be just fine with these. One thing that does stand out with both of these controllers is that the analog stick does kind of get in the way of my thumb. So honestly, the only way I felt like I could really use this controller was by angling it a little bit more than I would have liked to. And after playing with the gamepad for a couple days, I didn't even notice it anymore, but it was something I noticed when I first tried it out. Okay, a little bit more testing when it comes to latency. Dreamcast was just fine. Look at this sweet move I do on Sonic Adventure. Look at that jump, beautiful. And really across the board, every emulator I used did really well with this controller. So to give you a better idea of what these controllers feel like in the hand, let me compare it against some other devices. So here's the Odrego Super, the largest retro handheld device I own. This one has a five inch screen, and as you can see, it's a little bit smaller than the GameSir. But of course, this one doesn't have a phone stuck inside of it. It's just the device itself. Same thing with the PS Vita, also a five inch screen. The Vita feels way more compact than this phone setup, but I actually found this phone setup to be more comfortable to hold. And a lot of that has to do with the grips in the back of the device. These really do enhance the gameplay and I think it would allow you to play longer gaming sessions. Probably the best direct comparison is the original Nintendo Switch because they're about the same size. But just like the other devices, the Nintendo Switch doesn't have these handy grips on the back like this one does. And I can't overstate how nice it feels to have these grips on the back of the device. Now let's compare this to the Razer Kishi. And this is the one I used in my Android video originally. And I have to admit, I kind of hate this controller thing. It definitely compacts to a smaller size, but that's basically the only thing it has going for it. It's $100, it's a pain in the butt to expand, and it actually won't allow you to use any phone that has a case on it. So you have to take your case off every time you play it. And not only that, it's just a monster to hold in your hands. It's so much wider than the GameSir ones. And maybe I could see that if it had more ergonomics to it and it felt better, but honestly, the D-pad seems a little bit better and that's about all it has going for it. If you look, there's no support with your phone at all. It feels like you can just snap your phone in half while you're holding it. And the rear part of the gamepad is not ergonomic at all. It does not feel comfortable in the hands. Honestly, I had planned on doing a full review of this controller, but I ended up hating it so much that I thought, why even bother? It's kind of hilarious to me that the Razer Kishi actually costs more money than the games or gamepads. So putting my phone back into the gamepads here with the case on it, you can see just how sturdy it is. It's supported through and through. And not only that, it kind of blends in really well with the phone itself. It seems more like a unified experience. And I really can't overstate how nice these grips on the back are. So yeah, in a nutshell, when it comes to the feel of the device in the hands, I'm very impressed and happy with these two games or gamepads. But let's get an expert opinion when it comes to these two devices. So let me put them up here on my desk and let's do a scientific experiment here. Let's see which one Chicken prefers. And I'm not trying to influence her in any way, but you can see she obviously favors the non-Bluetooth controller. I think Chicken probably just sealed the deal. And that, my friends, is how science works. Now, if you're an iPhone user and you're trying to get that non-latency gameplay, just hold tight because I have a review of this one here coming up soon. So as we start to wrap up, one last thing I want to discuss. And that's just kind of the idea of the portability of this experience in the first place. 
And the fact is, these GameStar controllers are kind of bulky. When you think about the fact that they're actually bigger than your phone itself, it kind of takes away from that whole portable gaming system setup in the first place. At that point, you can make the argument that it's just as easy to bring a dedicated handheld device with you instead. And if you get a small enough retro handheld device, it's actually even more compact of an experience. Of course, what you want to bring around in your everyday carry is going to be totally up to you, and it's very subjective. But there are some pros of having a retro handheld device instead of this GameStar controller. For example, it'll have its own dedicated battery, so you don't have to worry about running down your phone battery. And of course, using the GameStar allows you to use all the games you can play on your phone, which are probably going to be higher-end emulators than what you can play on something like the RG351P. So I'm not trying to sway you one way or the other when it comes to this, but I do want to help you kind of think through this concept. Okay, wrapping things up here, when it comes down to it, this is kind of a weird video for me, because I'm trying to combine both the comparison as well as the review of these devices. And I think that if I was doing a review of just one of these controllers, I'd probably have a different outcome. Because for all intents and purposes, this new Bluetooth controller is actually really nice. It feels good in the hands, it's very easy to pair with your Bluetooth devices, it works with your iPhone as well as an Android phone, and overall the buttons are pretty decent. But the lag and latency issues that I mentioned before are really hard to overcome, and they're just basically insurmountable when you compare it to something like the USB-C version. I think it's no contest here, this direct input one is much better. And even though it costs $10 more than the Bluetooth one, I think it's totally worth it. Because not only are you going to have better performance when you're playing your games, but you don't have to worry about charging a second battery or second device. And when you think about it, the USB-C one might drain your phone a little bit, but it does have that USB-C pass-through as well. So at the end of the day, do I recommend these games or gamepads? Yes. But if you have a choice between the two, I would definitely say get the USB-C one instead. Alright everyone, that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming!